Now we've all seen that awesome slow motion footage on famous YouTubers channels, but maybe you've tried that and it hasn't worked out for you. In this video, I'm gonna give you four tips how to make your slow motion footage better in DaVinci Resolve 16. And trust me, number one is going to save your butt. So stay tuned for that. But let's get into the video. First, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be updated on the newest videos put out. So number four is shooting in high frame rates. A lot of the videos that you've probably watched that have that like silky smooth B-roll are shot at 120 frames a second or 180 frames a second or even sometimes just 60 frames a second. But nonetheless, there's more room to work with, right? There's high frame rate clips. Now you're saying, well, what does this have to do with DaVinci Resolve? This has like nothing to do. This is all camera techniques and stuff. Trust me, it matters. So most filmmakers use 24 frames a second as their timeline, in like in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or whatever. If you shoot at 24 frames a second and slow it down, it's going to be super choppy, super laggy. But if you shoot at a higher frame rate, it's gonna be smoother. There's gonna be more frames to fill those gaps, that stretch of time. So in the timeline here, I have things that are shot at 120 frames a second and it's super smooth. You can see it's just nice. So for good slow-mo in DaVinci Resolve or any other program, use high frame rate footage. Number three is time remapping. And that's where you take a clip and you can make one part faster, one part slower, and it just looks cool all together. In DaVinci Resolve, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on our clip and you're gonna hit retime controls. So you're gonna see this thing pop up right here. And let's say we want this intro part right here to be slow, but once the pour actually starts, it goes faster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this down arrow, we're gonna add speed point. So now you see, we can zoom in a little. I'm just hitting Alt and then I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in. So you see how it's like 100% and you have like 100% over there? Well, these are now two different sections. So what I'm gonna do is I want this part, this beginning part to go fast. I'm gonna click down on this down arrow, hit change speed, go up to like 800% because I just don't even want that. And then it just zooms through and this part now is slow-mo. So that's time remapping. So number two is retime speed. What ultimately this does is it will give us the ability to make smooth transitions in time. Instead of going from 800 to 100, you can go from 800 to 100, but have it be very smooth. So it's not just an abrupt change in time. It's gradual, it's smooth, it is pleasing to your eyes. So what we're gonna do to get this retime speed is we're going to right click on our clip, just turn off retime controls, you don't need that anymore. And then click this button right here. See how now you see you see this like retime speed right here, this big drop down. That's what our speed currently is. If you don't see anything, like just kind of blank like this, you're just gonna hit this down arrow, gonna go to retime speed, and there it is. All you're gonna do is click on your point, and you see how this is selected right here, this kind of transition? Well, we're gonna click this one. This is gonna add a curve instead of just such a hard transition, and do the same thing over here. And now you see you have these handles. And to whatever liking you want, you can just add a gradual curve or an abrupt curve, whatever you want. So now your transition over time is going to be smooth. It's not gonna be abrupt. So that's retime speed. And number one is optical flow. This is gonna save your life if you have forgot to shoot in like 60 or 120 frames a second. If you're shooting in 24 frames and you have a 24 frame timeline, like I said earlier, you're not gonna have much information to work with. What Optical Flow does is it analyzes your footage and it tries to best create a transition frame in between those other frames. So it's kind of like adding new frames into your video so it looks smooth. So let's take this clip right here of this guy break dancing. It's, it's in full speed. I want that slowed down, but if I change the speed of the clip down to 50%, right, about 50%, you can see that it's laggy. It's not fun at all. It doesn't look good. It looks amateur. In the inspector tab, we have this thing called retime and scaling. We're gonna go down to retime process and hit optical flow, and then motion estimation, we're gonna do enhanced better. So once you do that, it's gonna to try to recreate frames in between that make your clip look smooth. So there it is. There's four tips in DaVinci Resolve 16 that will make your slow motion footage even better. In the comments below, let me know what kind of camera you have and if it can shoot in those really high frame rates, like 120 frames or 180 frames. I always love talking cameras and I read every single comment I get and respond to it. 
But as usual, the video on top is all about the best rendering settings in DaVinci Resolve 16, 1080p, 4K, and 4K widescreen. It's really awesome. Check it out. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks you would like. But until the next video, peace.